Let's talk about some scientifically proven ways that can really help you to study better, okay? So we all study in different ways. We've done a video before, we've tried to talk about some of the high intensity study techniques, but there are some scientifically proven way that if you follow, then you can study better, okay? So let's have a look. Number one is stick to print, right? So with everyone having iPhones, brand new phones, computers, tablets, it's very easy to get lost in that uh, thing of the chasing technology, okay? So it's very easy to not consider books and paper as your primary mode of study. Now, it's been scientifically proven that the uh, use of uh, technology can actually hinder your practice, can actually um, make you study inferior, okay? Make your outcome inferior as compared to when you do the actual paper book study. So whenever possible, whenever you can, try to stick to the print, okay? Number two, listening to music. Now listening to music can be relaxing, soothing, and it's been proven in the past that some of the musicians with their special music can actually trigger some of the specific areas in the brain which can help you study better, retain better, and learn for a longer period of time, okay? So music, I know some people prefer complete silence, quiet silence, they want to go to the library to study, but listening to music can really, really help you study better. Number three is exercise. Take lots and lots of fluids, hydrate yourself, and exercise. Exercise can really help the brain power after a short workout is much, much more as compared to an idle person sitting down and trying to study. Number four is relaxation and meditation. This is something we all know about. We need to relax. We need to keep the stress away. We need to focus, okay? So this all increases your intensity of study. This all in helps you study better, okay? Um, number five, which you might find it strange, but scientists say study when you're tired and get some rest afterwards. That's right. So sleep learning is what's the term coined for this. So learning when you're tired can actually help you retain better. It's scientifically proven that you tend to revise, you tend to think about those things which you learn or which you study just before you go sleep. Okay, so if you're really, really tired, try to study. Number six is change your environment. Okay, the place where you study can be monotonous, can become a bit boring, and it can affect what you learn, how much you learn, how much you retain. So whenever possible, try to change the place, try to change the environment in which you study. Right, uh, number seven is thwart the curve of forgetting, okay? So if you are forgetting something, you need to revise. This is where space repetition comes in. So once you study something, after 24 hours, you retain less than 10%, all right? And as time goes on, this becomes less and less and less. Now think of a good example. If you have bought a new house and you go, or you shifted your work to a new place. Now, the first time you go there, you might use a Google Maps. Second, third time, you might use it less and less. And after that, uh, once you start repeating the whole process again, you, what, what you commonly realize is after a few days, you don't need the map anymore. And after a few months of going back and forth from that new place of work to your home, because you are following the same route, suddenly you stop thinking after a while, right? Now, it's the same methodology that's basically what space repetition is. So you do something and after some interval, if you repeat it again and again and again, and if you keep repeating after some space, then the chances that you're gonna forget it are almost negligible, okay? So the basic idea here is don't let something get out of your memory because it's normal, everyone does forget. Now, number eight is active recall. Now, this is very, very important. Uh, this was a hot topic in 2009 when a psychology uh, prof professor published an article advising the students against reading and rereading textbooks. So what we need to do 
to avoid this fallacy is use active recall. All right, so we should close the book, try to think what we have learned, and we should try to do an active recall. When you're just reading, 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 it's passive recall. You're not going to retain too much, okay? However, if you close your book, try to think, all right, what have you learned, then you'll suddenly realize some of the things which you thought you know really, really well um, are not so good in your memory, okay? So active recall is very, very important. Okay, now there's something called as a Littner system, okay? Now, this study method forces a study to the students to learn um, through repetition. However, the focus now is on the material that you know the least, okay? So imagine a bookshelf or imagine a deck of cards, okay? So what this method suggests that the material which you know the least should be in the front. The material that you know the best should be in the last. So when you're reading, when you're revising, you're focusing more on the stuff that you don't know, okay? Which makes sense, all right? So something that you know, the chances that you're gonna forget are very less, okay? So something that you already know, okay? Think of like some very close friend of yours who you meet every day. You know their name. You usually know where they live, what they do. You don't have to learn that, okay? However, if you meet a new person and uh, you've only met them once, it may be a little bit hard to memorize their name, what they do or not. However, if you meet them again and again and again, now that sim same new person is not new anymore. And this is the whole idea, okay? So the stuff that you don't know about too much, you need to revise that, you need to learn that more and more, okay? The stuff that you already know, you don't have to worry about too much. Now, this is a very common mistake uh, that students make. The reason for that, it is just comfortable to read the material that you already know. It just plays on your mind. It just makes you positive that, hey, I know this stuff. However, the exams are based upon your uh, generalized learning, your overall knowledge. So it's very important to learn the things that you are less comfortable about, okay? So this is called the Leitner system. Number 10 is taking the practice test. Now, all of us sit various exams uh, uh, for medical students. For example, there's a PLAB, there's USMLE, there's AMC, um, and a lot of similar exams, uh, NEET in India. Uh, now, whenever these exams are done, most of uh, these exams have old question papers. Now, this again is very, very important. This is probably the most important of all that I'm talking about. Now, same material can be tested in different ways in different exams, okay? So, for example, if you sit USMLE, it's a clinical-based medical exam. However, if you sit the Australian Medical Council exam, it's a little bit less, no, less clinical exam. If you sit the Indian NEET uh, exam, then it's a different exam, okay? Now, these are all based upon similar subjects, but the way they ask their questions is different. So if you're just preparing and trying to learn and try to just memorize whatever is given in the books, there's a very high chance that you may not do too well in these exams. So you have to focus your study based upon that exam. And the best way to do that is look at the old exams, do practice tests, right? And try to learn what the exam is based upon. Now, number 11 is make connection, okay? So what that means is rather than just memorizing like a parrot, we should try to make connections, try to relate things to each other, okay? So if there are causes, for example, of a disease, why is that thing causing the disease, okay? How is that connection, all right? So you need to go a little bit in depth of learning to see what go, what's going on in there. And then if, if you have 10 points which correlate to a thing, what you need to do is not only try to pictureize and correlate with each other, 
but you should try to correlate with the official topic okay now number 12 is the Feynman notebook method okay now Feynman Robert Feynman was a physicist okay he created this organization based notebook learning method we write the title page on an empty notebook uh, and you just write about the things you don't know about uh, from there he developed reconstruction and destruction of ideas in an effort to better understand the concepts so to make this if method effective you need to first identify what you want to learn then you should try to explain it as you would to a four or a five year old child okay um, this method also uses picturization to illustrate your concept now, number 13 which is very effective in my daily practice is take the role of a teacher be a teacher uh, when you teach someone not only is it active recall active learning not only is uh, is, is is this method very effective in learning new things but it's also uh, revising what you have learned it's also a test where you actually see do you really know because you can only teach uh, without looking at the actual stuff if you know that stuff so being a teacher really helps uh, just focusing on uh, what you want to learn okay so there's something that's really, really difficult to comprehend and learn uh, you focus on that and then you try to teach someone next day okay so that can also include spaced repetition so what I do is something that I'm not 100% sure about, something I'm weak in. What I try to do is I try to do a space repetition of that topic uh, by teaching others. Okay. So let's say I've learned something today. What I'll do is try to teach someone that topic next day. Then I'll try to teach someone that topic maybe a week later, uh, maybe to a different friend, to a different student. So that if you notice will include a lot of things we just talked about that's a revision that's uh, repeating something that you are less familiar less comfortable something that changes your environment uh, that's something giving your space repetition so that's an amalgamation of all the different methods we have talked about so far all right then number 14 is think about what you've been thinking okay so this is a bit of a deep psychological concept but this is like meditation and this is being about self-awareness okay so we should be able to assess our level of skill and where we stand in the studies this is also important to identify hey i'm good at this stuff i'm not good at this stuff okay and i need to focus on these subjects i need to focus on these topics wherever um, uh, I can and whereas some of these topics I'm good at and I don't really need to worry about these okay so that's what uh, self-awareness is all right so number 15 is uh, this is one, one of the things that you should be aware of what not to do number 15 is over learning okay again you need to focus on what are you being tested upon what your goals are if your goals are to get a higher score in an MCQ test there's no point learning paragraphs and paragraphs of text okay so focusing on that exam focusing on uh, what your goals are will really really help you also over learning is almost every time counterproductive because what you're going to do is because everyone has a limited memory because everyone cannot recall and remember everything that they learn it's important to identify which are the important things and it's important to identify what are the things what are, what are your goals that you want to achieve when you're trying to learn number 16 is stop multitasking okay so stopping multitasking is very very important especially in the current age and scenario uh, the reason being there are a lot of distractions everyone has computers tablets uh, iPhones and 
uh, can get distracted very easily. It's very easy to say, hey, I've studied this chapter for half an hour. Let me just have a little bit of uh, uh, scroll through the Facebook or let, it, let me have a look at some of the Instagram posts. You know, that is very deleterious to your learning. What you need to do is stop all these distractions, stop multitasking and focus on the task on your hand. That's very, very important. Number 17, forget about the learning styles, okay? Now, learning styles are basically different ways of learning. If you go online, if you look at some of the learning techniques, then you'll find hundreds and hundreds of methods. It's important to understand there is virtually no evidence for this and every person studies and learns in a different way, okay? Some people are good reading uh, a subject um, five minutes at a time, half an hour at a time, whereas some can do that for a little bit longer. Um, some use a particular method of learning, some use the other method of learning. However, there's no two ways about it, okay? There are some generic ideas that we have discussed about in this video, and uh, the focus here is not to focus a set style, okay? You just not focus me, okay? What works for me may not work for you. So you need to individualize your study, okay? But the goal here is to highlight, hey, these things work. These is the stuff that you should be careful about uh, when you study. And uh, if you do in a systematic approach, you will learn better, you will do better in your exams, okay? I hope you like this video. Uh, please leave your comments below and uh, we can help you out.